Jones. Often playing fullback or tight end. Ron Washington has it bounce off his shins. And they'll just eat the football as Jason Vega grabs it and rolls out of touch. I'll show you that fake field goal. Rob Cote is a tight end. Now this one almost disrupted by Kenny Maynard. Number 54 is Cote is going to come behind the line scrimmage and stop it there. You see that? He almost makes the tackle in the backfield. Goes low. Cote fights off that one while catching the football. And then he's got a running lane in the corner and gets to Pater. Pretty good surge by Bryant Turner as well, but not enough to stop. The 26 yard touchdown run for Cote. At the 23 yard line, Joey Elliott will swing it to Simpson out of the backfield. And he's going to get dragged down by Duran Mayo. Talked about Chad Simpson in the opening and in the pregame show about the fact that last week just nine carries. The week before that he had eight carries. That's back to back without hitting double figures when it comes to actually running the football. Now he is seeing a little bit out of the air like we saw in that last play. When you look at his touches last few weeks, 12 against BC and Saskatchewan and then 13 last week. They'd like to get that up around 17 to 20. Second and eight, the six receiver set for the Bombers. Elliott Dunder to Wilson. He'll get dropped in. There is Charleston Hughes, who's been riding high for the Stampeders of late. Hughes with his sixth sack, which puts him to second place in the CFL sack race. Second place all alone. He was in a tie with five coming in with a few guys, but just works his way on a bit of an inside move there. Had Jawan Simpson coming on contain. There's another guy who has been on a roll last three games. Ten tackles, three sacks, two forced fumbles, and from the defensive end position, an interception. Bro, lot hit him with the hard man choice. Leads the league in tackles by defensive ends. Having a big year. Reno with the kick. Fielded at the 41. And McDaniel up to the 50. Calgary with the football and the lead here early at McMahon. Well, it could be a big night for a former Winnipeg Blue Bomber quarterback chasing a Blue Bomber legend in Dieter Brock. And with more, let's join Jermaine Franklin. Thanks, Chris. You know what? Kevin Glenn just 40 yards behind. When we informed him about this fact yesterday, he was genuinely surprised and a little impressed with himself. He said, this is something that I can truly be proud of. Now, being a former bomber, Glenn knows a lot about Dieter Brock, the Hall of Famer, won two most outstanding player awards, two All-Canadian quarterback awards, and of course, he's in the Hall of Fame with almost 35,000 yards in passing. Glenn stressed that the win is most important, but it certainly would be nice to pass Dieter Brock on the all-time list on Wall of Fame night here in Calgary. Jeff Garcia is also in the building. He'll be honored tonight. And for Wall of Fame night, how about Jermaine Franklin looking resplendent on the sidelines? Oh, is that a version of the sweater vest? Wow. I think it is, but look good down there. Well, that's quite an accomplishment to move up the list. Dieter Brock, former Winnipeg Blue Bomber. Of course, Kevin Glenn, remember back in 2007 as a bomber, a game away from competing in the Great Cup Championship when he hurt his wrist in the Eastern Final. Brandon Collier shaking up on that John Cornish run for four yards. And he makes his way slowly to the sidelines. Jake Thomas, the youngster out of Acadia, has checked in at defensive tackle. The Bombers have really struggled since then at, at finding some stability at the quarterback position. Remarkable how many different quarterbacks have been at the helm of the Bombers since Kevin Glenn. And Glenn pulls it down to take off. And he'll run for first down. You don't see Kevin Glenn run much. 12 carries, 76 yards coming into the game, but it's a first down run for Kevin Glenn. This defensive line for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers are a little bit undersized in the matchup against the Calgary O-line, but they are quick. And so they should open up a few running lanes for Kevin Glenn as they try and make their moves and go around these offensive linemen playing very well in Calgary of late. Kevin Glenn did not run once in the game against 
The Eskimos at Commonwealth last Friday. Direct snap, here's Cornish. And John Cornish will be tripped up at the 43-yard line. Tackle on the play by the corner, Johnny Sears. Last five games, John Cornish has 643 yards rushing. You take a look at that, it's around 129-yard average, and you just think about a guy with over 150 yards in three of the last five, 125.6 yards in the last five games on 17 carries. There has not been a better running back in the league. He leads the Canadian Football League. All backs. Here's Glenn, takes a look, in some trouble, scrambling, and gets hit and brought down, and that's Alex Hall who drops Kevin Glenn behind the line of scrimmage. It will be third down. Three-game drought for Alex Hall to get to the quarterback. But again, the, the quickness of this Barber defensive line as they get, get up the field like Alex Hall did there and then spin back and still make the tackle from behind. Fifth sack of the year for Hall. Bombers have been good in that area lately. Six sacks last week, 16 in five games, and tied for the league lead coming in. Rob Maver looking to pin the Bombers, and this will bounce down to the five-yard line, and Washington will step out at the seven. So a deep start for Joey Elliott when we come back. Important game for Joey Elliott for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Not only to climb out of this hole and try and get a win in the win column after three straight losses, but also might be his last chance in an audition here. He better be wary of pick number 39, who's made some noise already. At the seven, they're going to go for the deep ball, and Burks Denmark can't reach it. He had a step in behind coverage. Well, we mentioned since Kevin Glenn left, and how about this? Nine games since Kevin Glenn left the Bombers against Calgary, Joey Elliott the first to get a second start against the Stampeders, eight different quarterbacks. By the way, the last quarterback to throw for over 300 yards against Calgary, Ryan Dinwiddie. In that game back in July 24, 2008. Second and 10, here comes the rush, and Joey Elliott is buried back inside the five. Pressure from Corey Mace. There's Brian Bulky. And that defensive line of Calgary is in dancing form early. And a little more playing time in this game. Brian Bulky was on and off the roster throughout this season. He just ducks underneath them there. And it looks like the Winnipeg Blue Bombers in this position are almost going to have to punt it away. Buck Pierce right here is going to get the start next week, according to head coach Tim Burke. So last chance maybe for Joey Elliott to maybe plant a seed in his head coach's head just to say, don't think about me. I'm, and it will be giving up the safety, yeah. Three two and outs, and Mike Renault puts down a knee in the end zone, and Calgary leads by nine. Well, the capacity crowd in the Banjo Bowl in Winnipeg left stunned disbelief after the last minute strategy by Tim Burke for the punt. And that set up Sandra DeAngelis with a walk-off field goal for a Rough Rider win. And well, had, a lot of heat on the head coach. Yeah, had he gone for the field goal there and made it, it would have been a four-point game at that point and forced the Saskatchewan Rough Riders with Drew Willie in the game, their backup quarterback, to drive the field and score a major. With the punt team out there. The punt did not go out where they wanted it, went into the end zone for a single, which didn't matter. And, of course, that's been the talk of the town in Winnipeg all week. Tough start for new head coach Tim Burke after coming off the Labor Day weekend 52 nothing loss to the Riders. Kickoff after the safety and it bounces all the way down inside the 10. Here's LaMarcus Coker. Again, no Larry Taylor, so Coker into the lineup. He's brought down by Marcellus Bowman. And a flag on the play. Couple of penalty markers on the field. 
Taylor with the knee injury, which has him sidelined. Yeah, and, and on the nine game. So there's Robbie Bryant, who not in the lineup. During the return, illegal block, Calgary, number 42. 10 year penalty, first down. That's Duran Mayo. We talked to Tim Burke about that controversial decision last Sunday. The number one thing is I made the wrong decision. Uh, the, the correct decision in that situation is to kick the field goal. That gives yourself a chance to win the game just by kicking the field goal, and then they have, uh, you know, 30 seconds to get down the field and score a touchdown, which is virtually impossible. You know, and I'll give him this. I mean, he's first of all thrust into this position. He obviously would love to take over, be a head coach. He's been working towards that over the last few years, but didn't want to do it under these circumstances with the firing of Paul Lapolis a couple of weeks ago. But I will give him credit for this. I mean, he owned the mistake. And right after the game, it was hours after the game, as a matter of fact, said, yeah, I made the wrong mistake. It was a bad call. Cost us a game. Said that to his teammates as well, and you can respect that. Joe West to catch, and now to the far side, Johnny Forzani has the grab, brought down quickly by Alex Suber. You know, so he, he socks Chris to his team and stands up in front of him and says, look, I, I cost us that close game by a point. And, you know, everyone makes mistakes, whether it's players, management, and sometimes head coaches, and he's got to try and catch up in a hurry midseason. Last time that the Winnipeg Blue Bombers changed a coach in midseason was back in 2004 when Jim Daly took over for Dave Ritchie. Four minutes left, first quarter. Second and five. And that pass is caught. Nice grab there by the newcomer, Maurice Price, who draws into the lineup. Broke a foot in the preseason. He's waited a long time to make his Stampeder debut. Yeah, and he's... Uh, been working his way back into the lineup trying to come back from that injury that's a nice catch over the middle and got his arms underneath it no need for Tim Burke to challenge that one so a second down conversion catch for Price and a first down at the 38 and the sweep to Price and he's cut down across the 45, Zuber with the tackle. Dave Dickinson's got a deep playbook, doesn't he? Oh, yeah, and, and it's been, the play calling has been outstanding with the balance that he's shown, whether it be running the football to John Cornish, and we showed you how productive he's been over the last five games. This kind of play changes things up, so if the defense starts keying on John Cornish, and you give it to a receiver coming wide like that, he can catch the corner and turn a... 10-yard play into a big, big play. Stampeders are second in the CFL in first down production. Only the BC Lions have generated more first downs this season. Here's Cornish. And he should have the first down. And Cornish gets up a little agitated. And this is another example just of, of what Dave Dickinson is doing to mix things up with tight end formation like this. Bring in some extra blocking, short yardage for, for John Cornish, but he'll, he'll do that whether it's second down or first down on a rundown. Change up formations, different looks, different play calls as this offense continues to evolve. Burnish does get the first down. Glenn checks back in. There's Nick Lewis. And Lewis, a tough guy, bring down. Stretching out near the 45-yard line. Catch number 699 for Lewis, who is approaching a couple of milestones. 700 catches and 10,000 yards. 18 on that grab from Kevin Glenn. Took all of Johnny Sears and Ian Logan to get him down that slant over the middle, and he loves that area of the field. No problem for Nick Lewis going into the middle. So seven from 10K for Lewis. Next catch will be number 700. Back in the hands of Cornish, and nothing there as they shut the door inside on Cornish. With that throw to Nick Lewis, Kevin Glenn passes Dieter Brock, the 12th all time. 
And for us old timers, Dieter Brock was a quarterback. He, oh, yeah. uh, he could throw the football. Was there a stronger arm at throwing the wide side out than Dieter Brock's? Could be facing the opposite direction and just strong arm it with a flick of the wrist. 45, 50 yards. Second and long, Glenn to throw, looking over the middle, and that's broken up Johnny Sears. A nice play as they tried the connection to Joe West, and Sears helped cause the first incompletion by Kevin Glenn on the day. Kevin Glenn's had time to throw, lots of time to throw, and he will here again. John Cornish comes in, picks up a nice block in the middle, giving Glenn a chance to get it over the middle, but Johnny Sears in perfect position. Gets a knockdown. His fifth. So Maber looking for the pin once again. Washington lets this one bounce in. He'll give up the single point. The no yards flag comes out. Three seconds remaining here in the opening quarter. And likely a 10-0 Calgary lead on the 56-yard single by Maber. Well, as Tim Burke fell up, found out last week, it's not as easy as it looks sometimes to angle that football for a punter out of bounds inside the 10-yard line. It's a more difficult kick than people think, and Rob Maber wanted it and missed it on that last one. So the options given to Joey Elliott in most cases you give the single and take better field position. See if that's what the Bombers are going to do. But these first quarters. No yards. Calgary, number 24. That penalty will be declined. One point is scored. So it is a 10-0 lead. It means the Bombers have been outscored now 77 oh. to 18 in the first quarter. And barring a one-play touchdown here to wrap up the quarter, It'll be the sixth time in 11 games that the Bombers have been held without a point in the first quarter this year. Zero touchdowns in 10 games in the first quarter. Make it 11. Unless, as, as you mentioned, this is a one-play throw for a touchdown from Elliott. Offensive touchdowns, of course, the Devon Washington punt return last week here as the sweep that Denmark runs out of room. And that is the opening 15 minutes here at McMahon. Well, it started with a big play to Nick Lewis. Charleston Hughes has been tough defensively. And a gadget play field goal for Rob Cote. Stamps with the lead. 